Installing the equipment. Caution. Before starting to use the equipment, read carefully the user manual, especially the work and accident protection instructions. First, we plug in the switch cabinet to the electrical system. The switch cabinet should be connected already to the equipment by an electrician. Then we connect the water inlet to the cooling water system of the equipment. We make sure that the outlet of the worn-up cooling water is also connected with a silicone hose or metal tube to the sinkhole. First, we fill up the water jacket of the cauldron. Meanwhile, we have to release the air from the water jacket by pressing the plate of the vacuum valve. When the water level reaches the maximum, which is approximately the two-thirds of the silicone Nevo tube, we stop the filling. After this, we fill up the deflagmator and the final condenser with water by opening the flow meters to the maximum. When the cooling water is flowing out constantly in the draining pipe, the final condenser and deflagmator is filled up properly. Filling in the mesh. Distillation starts with filling the mesh into the cauldron. We can do that by lifting the column off the cauldron or with the funnel through the loading door or with a mesh pump also through the loading door. The capacity of the equipment is minimum 40 liters and the maximum is 80 liters. We can know that we reach the maximum capacity when the mesh reaches the point where the mixer's stalk enters the cauldron. Don't load more mesh than the maximum capacity, because in case of some mesh types, for example brandy, the mesh can produce foam which can block the perforated plates. After loading the mesh, we have to tighten the fixing screws of the dome and the loading door. Check if the gasket of the cauldron hasn't been moved. Heating up phase. We switch on the electric main switch. First we start the mixer and then we start the heating with the maximum performance. The mixer should be operated during the whole distillation because this helps in the distribution of the heat coming from the walls of the cauldron, causing a faster heating up time and also helps the different elements to reach the boiling point in the same time. Heating up time of the 80 liter mesh is approximately 50 minutes. During heating up, the pressure of the water jacket will rise and reaches its maximum 0.5 bar. We can follow the rise of the heat in the cauldron on the digital mesh thermometer. Important, at the beginning of the heating up, start the final condenser with a through flow of 40 liter per hour. This is required because alcohol vapor can get into the air, which is inflammable. Reaching the boiling point. The digital mesh thermometer can be set on alarm when it reaches the boiling point. This can be around 85-95 degrees Celsius, depending on the alcohol content of the mesh. The more alcohol has the mesh, lower is the boiling point. When we reach the boiling point of the mesh, we switch back the heating to 4 kW. We open the flow meter of the deflagmator to the maximum. We can even switch off the heating for a little, little while if the head thermometer shows rapidly rising heat. We can also regulate the heating more accurately with the 0 to 2 kW pot meter in this case. The vapor rising from the mesh through the column is condensated by the deflagmator, turns into liquid again and it is flowing back on the perforated plates. This is called reflux. With the maximum cooling of the deflagmator we can cause maximum reflux, which means that all the vapor reaching the deflagmator will be condensated and turned into liquid again. This causes a closed circulation in the column. We turn the plate liquid level regulators in the maximum position and we will see that the plates are being filled. First the top plate will reach the maximum capacity, then the liquid will flow on the second plate through the spillway in the middle of the plate. When all the plates reach their maximum capacity and the vapor circulates in this closed system, we can say that we reach the balance of the column. We should pay attention that the column should remain in this balance during the whole distillation. 
pre-distillate separation. At this moment we are heating the mesh with 4 kW. More accurate heating we can add with the 0 to 2 kW pot meter. We reduce the deflagmator's flow rate from the maximum to 30 to 40 liter per hour. The head temperature will rise after this and we should keep it around 83 degrees Celsius and never go over 85 degrees Celsius during the whole distillation. What is important during the whole distillation is that we should keep the balance of the column with the right amount of heating and right, right amount of cooling. We should keep the head temperature between 78 and 83 degrees Celsius during the distillation. The equipment reacts very precisely to any of our regulation. If we try, for example, to open the flow meter of the deflagmator to the maximum, we will see that the head temperature reacts in a few seconds with cooling down. With the precise regulation of the head temperature, we can control which fractions can go through into our distillate. When the head temperature reaches the boiling point of the alcohol, which is around 78 degrees Celsius, the chemical elements of the pre-distillate, which typically have low boiling point, will go through the deflagmator and condensate in the final condenser. The pre-distillate will slowly start to drip out into the parrot beak. At this moment, all three liquid level regulators are in the maximum position that helps concentrating the pre-distillate elements in the column before they reach the deflagmator. So the pre-distillate started to flow out. We check quickly the system. Heating is at 4 kW. Deflagmator flow rate is between 30 to 40 liter per hour. Final condenser flow rate is between 20 to 30 liter per hour. The pre-distillate should flow thin and we can even rise a little bit the deflagmator flow rate so we can keep the outflow thin. This affects that the pre-distillate will be very concentrated and just a very little amount, around 1.5 2 deciliters, we will receive. We collect the pre-distillate in glasses by half to 1 deciliters and we reserve them for later inspection. During the pre-distillate, the head temperature will be around 78 degrees Celsius. We see that the boiling point at the mesh is 91 degrees Celsius in our case, which means that the alcohol content of the mesh is around 15%. The boiling point always depends on the alcohol content of the mesh. The more alcohol it has, the lower is the boiling point. Summary. During the pre-distillate collection, plate liquid level regulators are in the maximum position and all three are filled to its maximum capacity. The column is in balance with the precise heating and cooling regulation. The pre-distillate is flowing out thin and concentrated from the final condenser. We check the system again quickly. Heating is at 4 kW. Deflagmator flow rate is between 30 to 40 liter per hour. Final condenser flow rate is between 20 to 30 liter per hour. The thermometer of the final condenser should stay between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius during the whole distillation. Let's focus on the collection of the pre-distillate. When the parrot beak is almost full, we drain off the liquid. The parrot beak's capacity is approximately 1 deciliter, so we drain off the liquid into 3-4 separate glasses. And we do this again as long as we feel the smell of the pre-distillate elements, which are like acetone or glue. It has a very pungent odor. The smell of the pre-distillate comes from ethyl acetate and acetaldehyde. These two components are typical elements of the pre-distillate. Depending on the quality and alcohol content of the mesh, we can expect 1.5 2 deciliter of pre-distillate. When this typical smell disappears and we can only feel the pure alcohol or fruity hints in case of brandy, then we start to collect the mid-distillate. These are our first, second and third glasses. We can feel now that the smell of the outflowing alcohol is clear. If we can still feel a tiny hint of the pre-distillate odor, that's okay. 
and the whole amount of distillate, what we will have, it will mix and won't cause any disturbing effect. Meat distillate collection. We collect the meat distillate in a bigger container. With the perrot beak, we can measure continuously the alcohol content of the outflowing distillate. For this, we use a 0,100 alcohol meter, which we should place in the parrot beak only when there is enough liquid inside, otherwise it can break. The mid-distillate flows into the parrot beak. When it becomes full, it flows into the container through this pipe. The first few deciliter mid-distillate has a very high alcohol content, around 93-94%. We check the system again. Heating is at 4 kW, mesh thermometer is at 91.5 degrees Celsius, deflagmator is at 78 degrees Celsius, its flow meter is between 30 to 40 liter per hour, the final condenser's flow meter is between 20 to 30 liter per hour, and its thermometer is between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. During the collection of the mid distillate, we turn the two upper plate liquid level regulators to the minimum position. This helps to the mid distillate components to go through the column more easily. It's important because these are the chemical elements which are giving the rich aroma and full taste of the final distillate. So when we are switching off the two upper plates, we should start from above. When we turn the regulator in the minimum position, we will see that the liquid level will drain through the spillway to the plate under this one. We do the same with the second plate, but we don't change the third lowest plate. That stays in the maximum position. If the heating were too strong, we could notice that the liquid won't drain off the plates. This is because the upgoing vapor strength is so big that the liquid can drain through the little holes of the perforated plate. In this case, we can regulate the heating with the 0 to 2 kW pot meter, or even open a little bit the loading door where the extra vapor can be released. At this point, we can decrease the cooling of the deflagmator to 20 to 30 liter per hour, so we will get a continuous nice outflow during the mid distillate. From now on, if everything is alright, we will only regulate the deflagmator temperature between 78 and 85 degrees Celsius. Note that if the cooling water temperature is under 15 degrees Celsius, that can affect the temperature of the deflagmator and the condenser. In this video, we use regular tap water, which temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. We can also set the alarm on the thermometer of the deflagmator between 78 to 85 degrees Celsius, so if the temperature would leave this section, the alarm would warn us. In the beginning of period of the mid-distillate, there is still a lot of alcohol in the mesh, which we can retrieve easily. That's why the outflow rate of the distillate will be around 1 liter per 10 minutes. Later, when the alcohol starts to disappear from the mesh, the distillation will slow down. At this part, we will switch back on the two plate liquid level regulators to the maximum position and we will increase the deflagmator's flow rate to keep the head temperature under 85 degrees Celsius. But let's have a look at the present situation. Mesh temperature is 92 degrees Celsius, so we still have a lot of alcohol in the mesh. The pressure in the water jacket is 0.2 bar, which means that we have enough vapor in there for a smooth heat transfer. The NEVO level is perfect. Until 0.5 bar pressure, the bain mary system works perfectly. Above 0.5 bar, the safety valve will release the extra pressure anyway. So mesh temperature is 92 degrees Celsius. Head temperature is 81 degrees Celsius. Deflagmator flow rate is 20 liter per hour, final condenser flow rate is 40 liter per hour. We increase the heating to 5 kW to make mid distillation outflow a little bit faster. Because of more heating was added, we also increase the final condenser's flow rate to 40 liter per hour. 
The final condenser thermometer is around 50 degrees Celsius. If the heating performance would be too much, we would see that on the plates liquid level would stay high despite of the minimum liquid level regulation. In this case, we can regulate the heating power with the 0 to 2 kW pot meter, or even we can open a little bit the loading door so the extra vapor can be released. As we go on with the collection of the mid distillate, the temperature of the mesh will rise because it will have less and less alcohol content. Beside of rising mesh temperature, head temperature will also begin to rise. We can not let the head temperature over 80 5 degrees Celsius, so we must increase the water flow rate of the deflagmator slowly. We also have to keep the final condenser temperature between 40 to 60 degrees Celsius. The best way to cool back the deflagmator is that we open its flow meter for a few seconds to the maximum. Then we set the proper flow rate, which is in our case 30 liter per hour. We always make this setting according to the head temperature and we monitor it all the time. This setting should be done more times during mid-distillate collection in order to follow the raise of the head temperature. In the second half of mid-distillate collection, the mesh temperature reached the 97 degrees Celsius, so the alcohol content of the mesh is decreasing. This also means that those post-distillate chemical ele elements, which have a high boiling point, would go through in the column. But we don't want that. That's why we will switch back two plate liquid level regulators to the maximum position, because these are holding back the post-distillate elements. The better quality our mesh is, the longer we can hold the plate liquid level regulators in the minimum position and get more mid-distillate. In this case, we must regulate the plate levels and concentrate the post-distillate elements in the column only when the mesh temperature reaches the 98-99 degrees Celsius. Reaching the end of the mid-distillate collection, the mesh temperature will reach the 98-99 degrees Celsius and the head temperature will also reach 85 degrees Celsius. We must keep it around 80-83 degrees Celsius, so again, we must do our setting of the deflagmator with opening its flow meter for a few seconds to the maximum, then we set the proper flow rate to hold the required temperature on the head thermometer. In our case, the deflagmator flow rate changes to 40 liter per hour. Cutting the post distillate. We reached the post distillate. At this point, we have to cut the post distillate fraction from the mid distillate. The mesh temperature is over 98 degrees Celsius. The outflow speed is getting lower. We start to feel the smell of the post distillate's chemical elements, which are sour, vinegar-like. This means the end of the distillation. We set the cooling of the deflagmator to the maximum. With this, we cut the outflow of the distillate. We switch off the heating and the mixer. We release the useful distillate from the parrot beak. As an experiment, after cutting the collection of the mid distillate, we can leave the heating on and switch off the cooling of the deflagmator, so all the post distillate fraction will flow out. We can collect this in a few glasses to know how it smells. It has this typical vinegar like sour smell. Releasing the mesh and cleaning the equipment. So we switched off the heating and the mixer, then we switch off the main electrical switch. We close the flow meters of the deflagmator and the condenser, and we release the leftover vapor by opening the loading door. We turn the three-way back washing tap to horizontal position, this will clean the column and the cauldron with tap water. We have to clean the column this way between every distillation. At the end of the back washing, we have to turn the three-way tap to a vertical position again. Before we would drain off the mesh, we should connect tap water to the drain cock and open the water supply, so it will cool down the outflowing high temperature mesh before it gets into the sinkhole, otherwise the plastic sinkhole tube can melt. The leftover of the mesh can be cleaned easily from the cauldron with a garden hose nozzle through the loading door. 
When we finished with everything, we disconnect the switch cabinet from the electrical system and we close the main water tap.